wanted to tell you I wanted to share some important details that you're not aware of hey, welcome to another episode of Mike's collection I'm Mike and uh, in today's episode I'm just gonna catch you up on what uh, what action figures I've added to my collection since the last episode it's been uh, a pretty good week for new toys so uh, yeah we'll get right into that um, but before we do I did want to talk just a little bit about uh, comic books. I don't think I saw any movies since I've seen you last. I did um, just pick up this week the Hellboy Blu-ray, which just came out. Now, if you haven't seen this one, this is the, uh, the kind of the reboot of the franchise after the two previous movies that Guillermo del Toro had done. And this is one that was critically panned and that bombed at the box office probably going to end up being one of the biggest bombs of the year. Now, if you'd seen my video when it came out theatrically and I'd seen it seen it in theaters, I liked it. Like, uh, I acknowledge there's lots of problems with it, but I still thought it was fun. And, uh, yeah, I was... When I picked it up, I'm always hoping that there's um, enough bonus features on here to really make it worth my while because I always delve into all that stuff. And a director's commentary is usually my favorite... Uh, bonus feature just because you get you know a full hour and a half of additional entertainment by listening to the director's commentary and when I glanced at this it just listed off that it had a couple of feature um, featurettes um, deleted scenes b-roll um, so I thought well, I'll probably get through all these bonus features in like 10 minutes or something um, one of the features is called Tales of the Wild Hunt Hellboy Reborn and I was pleasantly surprised to see that that was uh like I think an hour and ten minute documentary about the making of the film and all kinds of various aspects of it and I quite enjoyed it so yeah if you stayed away from this movie because you heard really bad reviews um, I'd say check it out again if you're one of my friends watching this you know borrow it from me uh, yeah I liked it and uh, while we're talking about Hellboy I actually just finished the other day and I just reread it again about a half hour before I sat down to record this the uh, most recent trade paperback of BPRD, which is the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense, which is the team that uh, Hellboy works for. And uh, I don't know if, uh, if you're watching this, if you're a Hellboy fan uh, beyond maybe the movies, but like I've been a hardcore Hellboy fan almost since the beginning. And Hellboy's been going for 25 years now. And the Hellboy comic book... Um, has come and gone it's sometimes it hasn't been published for uh, I think maybe even years at a time but once they launched the BPRD book which stars like Abe Sapien and Liz Sherman who controls fire um, that really took off and became a world of its own outside of Hellboy and it has been my favorite comic book for years and years and years and years it's just the most consistently great comic book out there the uh, the writers and artists uh, are have all been great on it, and it always feels like it's working towards something. Um, like since the very first issue of Hellboy, you know he was summoned to Earth for his purpose to bring about Ragnarok, the end of the world, and you know then all kinds of various adventures have happened in the meantime, and it just seemed like to be one of those endings that would you know maybe never really come, or God knows when we'd event eventually get there. Um, I was very surprised to find out that this trade, called Ragnarok, was the end of the storyline. This is it. It all ends here. Now, there is a little afterword by the creator, Mike Mignola, where he says, this isn't the end. You know, we can go back and tell stories set in the past of this universe um, before all hell broke loose. Um, but yeah, this is essentially the conclusion of 25 years of Hellboy stories and I didn't realize it was even coming until I had bought this um, which was kind of shocking I would have thought that would have been much more widely publicized in comic book uh, you know I get the comic shop news every week I hadn't heard anything about it there I visit quite a few comic book websites I hadn't heard any buzz about it ending there but for such a great book to come to a planned conclusion like this uh, like I'm glad to see you know, they get to wrap up the story the way they wanted to, but at the same time, it's heartbreaking to lose my favorite book after 25 years. And, 
What makes it even tougher is, you know, just a couple of months ago, we lost the IDW Transformers universe, which had been going for about 13 solid years, and which I you know, was really into, and you know, the characters had really grown, and uh, yeah, then that ended. And I haven't even read it yet, because I buy a lot of comic books in this collected format, but uh, The Walking Dead just ended after like 15 years as well, and that they surprised readers with that as well. They didn't announce in advance. So yeah, the, uh, the issue that came out just a few weeks ago was the end, um, so it's going to be a while before I get around to reading it, before they put it in the collected edition, but uh, that's three you know, comic book universes that uh, are done, and it's, it kind of sucks. Hopefully there's some good stuff out there to replace it, because uh, this, I thought, was a great read. It was an emotional read to get through. We lose a lot of, uh, a lot of people in this, movie, in this uh, book. So yeah, if you haven't been reading this, I recommend you check it out. I actually recommend you check out this whole run of books. There's, I don't know how many uh, volumes available now. I think there's 30-some available of this. Hellboy, there's probably another 15. And then there's multiple spin-offs like uh, Abe Sapien and Edward, Edward Gray Witchfinder. Um, lots of little one-offs as well. Uh, check them all out. You'll be uh, rewarded for it with great great stories now uh where i just mentioned i hope there's good stuff coming out to replace some of this stuff i will tell you i have read a, a new book which has me pretty excited um i've never been like a huge conan fan i liked the movies when i was a kid i owned a couple of the black and white like magazine comics um and i always liked the idea of conan a barbarian but i've never been that invested in his storyline in his lore um, anyway, Marvel got the rights back to doing Conan comic books, which they haven't had since like the 80s. And I was excited by that because they were putting one of my favorite comic book writers, Jason Aaron, on Conan. And he seemed like a really good fit for it because he had been writing uh, Thor, you know, which is kind of has a lot of similarities in that way. Anyway, so I picked up in the last couple of weeks the first collected edition of Conan by Jason Aaron as well as the uh, kind of sister title, which is uh, The Savage Sword of Conan. And that one is written by Duggan. Um, but the main draw for this one for me was that Ron Garney, who's a favorite artist of mine, was doing the interior artwork. And uh, they were both good. Like, this one was absolutely excellent. This one, I wouldn't say is as essential of a read. But after reading this, and I was, you know, craving more Conan, I was very glad to see that this book came out just, uh, like, two weeks later. So, yeah, I plan on buying both of these going forward. And I highly recommend you check them out. So yeah, I think that's all I have for, for comic book talk. So uh, yeah, let's get into action figures. So I bought a few around here, and I also had a shipment come from Big Bad Toy Store, um, which is you know the online retailer that I buy a lot of my stuff at. And sometimes I struggle to show you the full box of things on my on my screen here. I don't have much room to work. So before I get on the other side of the camera, I'll just show you quickly. I got this box in. Um, and it's a fairly good size, which I probably wouldn't be able to show you fully on screen otherwise. But this is the first uh, Master of the Universe Classics figure from Mattel that I've bought in a while. Because as you're probably aware, Mattel was doing this, this line for a number of years. And you could buy one new figure every month. They would put out a new figure, you'd order it online. Um, but then for the last couple of years, Super 7 has taken over the, uh, the license from Mattel. And uh, I've shown you some of those figures on past videos. But there were a few figures from the line that I passed on initially. And now that uh, you know we're in a bit of a lull, I thought, well, maybe I'll revisit some of those characters. So Tuscador, unless you're kind of like a hardcore Master of the Universe fan, you probably don't know who that is. I don't really know anything about him either. Uh, he's actually from the New Adventures of He-Man, which is that weird kind of science fiction-esque version that they rebooted it in like the late 80s or maybe even the 90s um so yeah i've got a few characters from the new adventures and it's kind of hard to tell how big this guy is because he's kind of hunched over in his packaging there but you can see here you get these big elephant tusks and uh so even though i don't know anything about this character and i prefer kind of the classic characters as opposed to these outer space characters i thought this guy was cool enough to warrant a purchase so we'll check him out in a second And 
another box that I wanted to show you so you can appreciate in full is uh, another Godzilla figure here. Um, this is from NECA. And I previously got, uh, just a short time ago, a Godzilla based on the movie Godzilla vs. King Kong. Now this figure is based specifically not just on this movie, Godzilla King of, Posters, or King of Monsters, but it's based on the poster um, and the colorization of Godzilla in the poster. So the figure there is intended to look just like he stepped off the movie poster. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I don't have enough room to keep packaging for toys, so I always get rid of it. But uh, these are so nice, I'm kind of thinking of maybe hold on to this one, and now I regret getting rid of that King Kong vs. Godzilla packaging, because it was done in the same same style with the poster on the front and the Velcro flap. Anyway, what can you do? We'll take a look at Godzilla in a second. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's do that. Let's flip things around, take a look at all my new stuff. Okay, so we'll start with Tuscador here, who I already just kind of showed you. But uh, you can see what I'm talking about with trying to get the full packaging on screen here. It's a bit of a struggle to do that. Yeah, there's not much more for you to see here in the packaging. It's pretty uh, standard for what we got with all of these Masters of the Universe Classics figures from Mattel, showcasing some of the other figures on the back. And all the other figures you see here, these are all other characters from the new adventures of He-Man. So you can see even He-Man himself, that's where he was kind of a weird uh, spaceman instead of the kind of classic barbarian look we're more used to. Um, so yeah, I have a few of those guys already. And uh, now I got this guy. So let's pop him open and take a look. Okay, so here is Tuscador. And you can see he's a pretty big guy. Like, he's in scale with the other Masters of the Universe figures, so I guess technically he'd be about in the 6-inch range. But this guy's, I would say, definitely at least 7. Lots of kind of sculpted detail there, especially on his upper half. Uh, movement is okay. I think these uh, shoulder pads kind of hinder his arm movement a little bit, but bends at the elbows, turns at the wrist. He's got kind of a torso crunch there knees bend he's got some movement on the feet as well swivel there so yeah he's got some pretty good movement you can see his head there the helmet actually comes off so he's got a cool uh, little skull cap on underneath and yeah it looks pretty good and just for comparison purposes he kind of reminds me of the classic character Ram Man. So I'm going to bring Ram Man up here to compare to. Now Ram Man was a pretty good sized figure on his own. Um, at least as far as his girth. But he is kind of shorter. As I think he was always kind of intended to be a shorter character here. So you can see how Tuscador towers over him. So they got some design similarities. But uh, yeah, this is a big dude here. Tuscador. Now he does have some accessories. He's got a gun here, which fits into, he's got one open hand, so that's where that belongs. And he's got two sets of tusks. So he's got these tusks, which I think um, are more accurate to what the vintage, like 90s figure looked like. So he's got two of those, so you can give him that, like, let's call that the reasonable tusk look. Or you can give him these crazy things um, I'm not sure if I've got these in the right spots or not but yeah like those are some crazy tusks on this guy which would uh, even though they look cool it might make uh, him take up a lot more like a uh, space on the shelf than I need him to you know, I don't have a whole lot of shelf space to spare, so I can't let this guy take up an extra foot of space here. But, uh, yeah, he's pretty cool. I, I like him a lot. I actually, I like him even more once I realized that the helmet came off. I think the head sculpt actually has a lot of personality in him. This guy looks like a grizzled, cranky old bastard. And, yeah, I might even choose to display him without the helmet. I like it a lot. And yeah, I don't know how I'm going to display them with the tusks. Probably with the small tusks, but uh, this does look pretty cool. So yeah, Tuscador. I'm glad I picked him up. So here is the Godzilla. Based on the movie poster for the original movie, King of the Monsters.
So, as I already showed you earlier, it's a, very, it's a cool box with the Velcro. And uh, yeah, but let's take a look at them outside of the box. It's Godzilla, King of the Monsters, outside of the package. Now you'll see here, I don't have his tail attached. And I wrestled with it for a little while trying to get it on. But uh, it looks like NECA knew that I was going to struggle with it because they included some instructions here that says I have to warm the tail in warm water for 20 seconds before I can attach it. So that's a little frustrating, so I'll have to do that later. And yeah, so he's got his... His only other accessory is the uh, fireball there, the atomic breath. And that just kind of pops right out of his mouth. So let's take a look at him. So... Similar to the previous Godzilla that I got, the articulated jaw there, lots of good movement, multiple joints on the on the arms, on the head, and the neck. The tail's got a couple of different joints on where the segments split it up. He's articulated at the feet, uh, at the knee, and at the thigh, kind of a swivel at the waist there. So yeah, he's got lots of movement, which is a nice change from lots of the other um, Godzilla toys I I had for a while because a lot of times they seem to make Godzilla just like a solid piece of rubber. Maybe his arms move and maybe his head turns, but that's about it. So it is kind of nice to get these uh, really articulated versions from NECA. And I really didn't think I was going to go all in on these things, but um, I now have NECA's Shin Godzilla from the most recent uh, Japanese Godzilla movie. And now I have the Godzilla vs. King Kong. I now have this one, and I've actually got uh, two others on pre-order from Big Bad Toy Store based on his appearance in uh, two other movies because uh, his look tends to change a little bit each time. And uh, is it enough to warrant me spending another 30 bucks to buy another figure? Uh, apparently so. So I don't know how many Godzillas I'm going to end up with when all is said and done. I don't know if Neca needs to make a figure for every single movie because sometimes his look didn't change all that much. But if they decide to do that, and I decide to buy them all, I'm going to end up with 30-some Godzillas here. So Now this guy's pretty cool. I do like the uh, the coloring of him. Because this green look, it is uh, how, like, you know, a lot of people think of Godzilla. as this big green lizard. That's how he looked in the comic books and the cartoons. But uh, rarely on screen does he come across, like, this bright green. So... This kind of looks like how I, a lot of people think of Godzilla in their like in their mind's eye, I guess, but it's not necessarily accurate to how he's actually portrayed on screen. So I like it. Uh, lots of good detail. I like the shape of the the head here. It's a little different than what you're used to seeing on more modern Godzillas. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. And I think my uh, my display case is actually going to look pretty sweet once I have it filled up with various Godzillas from different eras. So yeah, there you go. Godzilla, King of Monsters. Now this is the last thing that I got from Big Bad Toy Store, along with those other two. And this is a Transformer. This is Ricochet. And uh, yeah, I didn't expect it to come in a box like this. I thought he would just come in a regular Transformers box. But no, it's almost like he doesn't have a box. It seems like he just kind of came in his shipping package. And this was like an online exclusive figure. So, uh, yeah, and he's not a character I know a whole lot about, and he's largely a repaint of, you know, existing figure we have, but, uh, yeah, I like the look of him, so I thought, why not? So here's Ricochet, but let's, uh, pop him open and take a look at him outside of his little plastic prison here. Here is Ricochet. Now, as soon as I opened him up, I was kind of surprised by how cheap he feels. Maybe I've been spoiled because all of the Transformers I've been buying lately have been um, Siege Transformers, which is the newer line, and they're a little bit more expensive and a little more detailed. This Ricochet is kind of a holdover from the last line of Transformers, which was the kind of uh, various lines, like the Combiner Wars and Titans Return, uh, Power of the Primes. They all kind of ran together. Um, and yeah, this is... I think mostly a repaint with some new parts, like a new head, possibly, of the uh, the Jazz figure from that line, which I actually didn't buy the Jazz because I was content with the, the older Jazz figure that I had. Um, so yeah, I don't know if this uh, 
wobbliness is unique to Ricochet or the jazz that he's based on probably had the same problems. But uh, yeah, it's a little disappointing actually how he feels. Anyway, so Ricochet is based on a G1 toy from the 80s, but it's not a toy I had. He kind of came after I had uh, stopped buying Transformers as a kid, so I really don't know anything about him. He's not somebody that's I can recall being featured in much of the uh, media, like cartoons and comic books. I just thought he looked kind of cool. And one of the things about characters like this, like anybody that falls within the G1 aesthetic, I like. But if I didn't buy this guy, I feel that all of a sudden he would appear in a comic book and IDW would make him really cool and then I'd regret not getting this figure because they have a tendency to do that. Um, I know I mentioned earlier that IDW Transformers comic book had come to an end, but they very quickly rebooted it with a fresh new universe. So yeah, even though I don't think Ricochet made a big impact in the last universe, there's always an opportunity that they could use him again and make him somebody that I'd really want to figure out. Anyway, so you can see kind of the back end of him. He transformed into a race car of some sort. I'm not going to bother to transform him here. Um, and he does come with one other accessory other than his gun here. And this is one of those things that uh, it can turn into either a foot or a hand. So like, there you'll see it's, oh, I already broke a thumb off. But this came with all the characters that were part of the uh, Combiner Wars. And essentially that just means Ricochet can be turned into an arm or a leg and you could pop this hand on him or make it a foot. And he could be used as a limb in any of the existing Combiners. So if I wanted to take a first aid out of my Defensor or something and replace them with, with Ricochet, I could. So yeah, I'll be honest, I'm surprised. I'm a little underwhelmed by this guy. He's okay, but nothing, nothing too exciting. Now this next thing I have to show you, it's kind of a, an oddity. So I got this from my local comic shop, Strange Adventures, where I get all my comic books. Um, I did not know they were putting anything like this out. Um, but Strange Adventures just listed it on their website this week as they got it in with all their new comic books. And as soon as I saw Parappa the Rapper figure, I said, oh man, I gotta get that, whatever it is. And if you're not familiar with Parappa the Rapper, he was like a weird little 2D, like thin as paper character that had a PlayStation game on the original PlayStation where you had to hit buttons to rap properly, kind of like the way Dance Dance Revolution works or like Rock Band probably, you gotta hit the buttons at the right time to keep the right, uh, tune while you're rapping so yeah when i saw the figure that they had set aside for me i was a little disappointed to see that it it doesn't move it's just uh, a vinyl it's like a static figure but uh, let's take a look at him here so yeah he's He's pretty cool. Like, I don't know what I'll do with him. It was kind of an impulse buy. If I had seen him in the store and actually maybe taken a, like, a second to look at him, I might have decided this isn't really my cup of tea. The fact that he comes on a display base, it kind of just, you know, really makes it clear that he's not an action figure. Oh, look, his head turns. So that's something. So he's not completely unarticulated. Um, but yeah, it's just pretty cool. Like, if they decided to make actual action figures of Parappa, I would probably definitely get that, and then this would be really kind of a waste of space. I wouldn't need this thing anymore. But as far as I know, this is the only Parappa the Rapper merchandise that they've ever put out. And uh, they followed it up with some of his friends. I think Strange Adventures advertised that they got uh, another one of the characters the following week. And uh, so, yeah, there's a, there was a couple other characters in the game that I wouldn't mind having action figures of. There was the, uh, like, the Onion karate instructor and I don't know there was a driving instructor that was like a cow or something I don't know it's been many 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 years since I played that game but uh, yeah I have a soft spot for Parappa the Rappa and so yeah this is kind of a cool little oddity here now uh, the next thing I'm going to show you I actually filmed um, a few days ago um, it's uh, some Marvel Legends so let's get into that so my local EB Games uh, called me today to let me know that one of my pre-orders was in. Um, so I went to pick that up, and they had the full assortment of Marvel 80-year anniversary figures. So these are still Marvel Legends. They just had kind of a 
kind of specific packaging to represent that they're part of the 80 year anniversary. So this was not the one I pre-ordered, although I did like the look of it. So this was the one I was like, I'll decide when it comes out, if I'm going to pick it up. And once I saw it, I was like, yeah, I got to pick this up. Iron Man is one of those characters that there's probably a lot of Marvel Legends collectors that are thinking the last thing they need is another Iron Man because there have been so many of them. But I've actually managed to avoid um, buying many Iron Man. The only Iron Man I have, other than the big Hulkbuster armor, is uh, Iron Man that's in the black and gold armor. So I don't have any kind of classic gold and red Iron Mans. And this, to me, is the most classic gold and red Iron Man. This is the comic book version i don't want the movie version even though i think the movie version is cool it's just a little too busy for me so i really like this one here so i'm glad i got it and i'm gonna pop him open and we'll take a look at him so here is iron man and uh yeah i think this figure is pretty much perfect as far as iron man goes like for you younger folks uh who Maybe discovered these characters from watching the movies. You might like the more uh, detailed movie versions of these characters. And you might wonder, how can he even bend his knees and his elbows if he's wearing just solid metal? And if I memory serves, I think they explained that back in the day. Like it was kind of a synthetic, bendable uh, armor that he wore over his sleeves and legs or whatever. But that aside, this is just like a nice, clean, comic book look. Not full of sculpted detail but it just looks great like that helmet is awesome love it and he does have a couple alternate heads so he's got Tony Stark which is nice to have and then he's got this other helmet which is kind of weird that they included it because it's so similar this one's got a bit of a nose on it and if you can see in there Inside his mouth, there's kind of like a grill, almost. Like a little vent, which the other helmet doesn't have. Um, it's okay. I, I can't imagine that there's anybody that's super stoked to have this one. This probably would have been sufficient. Um, what I would have liked to have maybe seen is uh, his mask where this kind of spikes up and separates from the red um, in kind of a cool look. But anyway, I don't really need the alternate heads because I'm so pleased with this one. Um, other accessories, so he has two open hands. Pop this off for a second. And the open hands have repulsor blasts that you can attach to them. So yeah, there he is with the open palm. Yeah. And there he is with the repulsor blast. So yeah, he can do that with both hands. So he's got two of those open hands, two fists. And yeah, he's got two, two repulsor blasts, and he also has two of these, which are kind of like more, I don't know, like explosion type of things. And I don't know if these might work. You can put them on his feet, and just, I guess you could do that. I don't know which one would look better, actually, like that effect to make it look like he's flying, or this effect. I would think probably looks better. But anyway, it's cool to have the display options anyway. So yeah, I'm very happy with this Iron Man figure. Um, as I mentioned, the only other like Iron Man I had was this black and gold one. And this is uh, like more of his movie look. A little more detailed. And uh, yeah. It, it was never great as the only Iron Man in my collection. Because this is not a, a suit of armor I have any fondness for really like it looks fine but uh iron man has to be either red and gold or red and silver as far as i'm concerned and the only reason i hadn't bought another iron man because i always felt i was going to be forced to buy one eventually and uh yeah i wasn't forced to get this one in order to complete a build a figure or to get another character i wanted in a two-pack this figure was actually just cool enough on its own to warrant a purchase so yeah if you spot this guy anywhere i highly recommend you pick him up now this is the item that I did pre-order, so this is the first appearance Wolverine uh, versus Hulk 2-pack. So you can see you've got both characters in there with some alternate hands. So Wolverine, you can display him with his claws in or out, 
and Hulk, you can display him with two open hands or two closed fists. And again, it's in that 80 year packaging. Some kind of nice classic artwork on the side. Little bios on the back. And you'll also see uh, the cover to the Incredible Hulk 181, which was the first appearance of Wolverine. And that's, uh, that's what he looked like when he first showed up. And so yeah, this figure captures that look pretty nicely by the look of things. We'll be able to tell a little bit more once I get these guys opened up. So why don't we do that right now? So here is Hulk and Wolverine. And yeah, these guys both look great. Um, even though I'm not a huge Hulk fan, I'm, and I'm not even a giant Wolverine fan either, to be honest with you. Um, like, I like both these characters, but I never read Hulk comic books on the regular, and my brother was the one that collected X-Men comic books. So I don't feel a whole lot of personal ownership of these characters the way I do about others like Spider-Man or the Silver Surfer. Um, so I already had a really good Wolverine figure in this one here. And after this figure came out, they released it in his kind of classic yellow and blue colors. But it was essentially the same figure. And I didn't get it because, like I said, I didn't feel I needed it. I'm not a diehard Wolverine fan. But then as it became harder to find, I kind of regretted not getting it. Um, and then they put out this version, and uh, I thought, well, that's good. I'm glad I didn't buy this exact figure repainted in yellow and blue because I'll get his first appearance in yellow and blue. And back in his first appearance, he didn't have the his well-known kind of pointy mask yet. It was much more subtle points, and it had the whiskers. And, yeah, it was just a little, little different looking. So this figure is not just like a complete redo of the one I already had. They look pretty different. And, uh, yeah, I think this guy's really cool actually the more and more i play with it the more i like it and uh like i remember when i was a kid and i first got into comic books wolverine was already wearing this and when i first like learned that in his first appearance he had this suit it seemed really silly to me at the time and i was like oh thank goodness he doesn't wear that anymore but i gotta be honest i really dig it i don't know if it's just this figure in particular that's really selling me on it but uh, i would totally want to see wolverine back in this outfit i think it's very cool and uh yeah so his only accessories are he's got additional hands that don't have the claws out they're both in fists so it's nice to have the option i guess but i will of course be displaying him claws out and then i've got this hulk and when i first saw this set uh, advertised online i was wondering if the shirt was attached to him and i was hoping it wasn't just because I wanted just a good classic Hulk. And in my mind, classic Hulk is just green guy with purple pants. Um, and the shirt actually just, it does come off quite easily. It's just sitting on there. There's actually nothing that holds it in place. But once I got him home, I actually really like the shirt. I feel it gives him a little bit, makes him a little bit more interesting to look at. Um, and when you take it off, he actually seems a little plain to me. So I like the shirt. I'm gonna keep the shirt, so. That was a good move on Hasbro's part to add that as an accessory. And uh, I'm glad I got this classic Hulk because the only other Hulk I have in my Marvel Legends collection is this Gladiator Hulk from, and this was a builder figure based on his look from Thor Ragnarok. And like, it's definitely a cool figure. I like it a lot, but it just didn't seem like the Hulk. That's not like the one Hulk that I want to have in my collection. Uh, and so yeah, it doesn't get much better than this guy. I would say this is a really cool classic looking Hulk Very happy with him. He's got a good range of movement. There's like butterfly joints Allow him to reach his arms pretty far forward and back Double jointed knees there. Yeah, just really cool like it a lot. So this was a very cool set highly recommend it now when the Captain Marvel movie came out and there was a whole line of Captain Marvel Marvel Legends that came out to coincide with it. Um, I actually figured this was a, a whole wave that I could skip, which was nice because these Marvel Legends come out so frequently that it's, uh, yeah, it's really beating up my bank account. So these are the figures that were in the assortment. So there was two different Captain Marvels, and I don't actually have a Captain Marvel yet, but I would prefer a comic-based one as opposed to the movie one. Then there was a Nick Fury, like a young Nick Fury. And again, I would prefer a comic version of Nick Fury, but even if I was going to have a Marvel Cinematic Nick Fury, I would want the bald one with the, with the eye patch. This figure seemed kind of redundant to me. Um, Jan Rog, who's the character I have in my hands here, 
Uh, he's a character I'm not even familiar with. Like, mind you, the figure passes for just a general, like, a generic Kree soldier. But if I wanted a generic Kree soldier, again, I would prefer the comic book version, which isn't as detailed. And I don't really like the look of this guy's mask. Anyway, so I didn't feel I needed him. The only figure I did buy was the Grey Gargoyle. Because this was kind of the only one that was like a strictly comic book based character. He really wasn't in it doesn't have a whole lot to do with Captain Marvel. It's kind of he was just kind of stuck in the line. But he's the one I wanted. So I bought him months ago and I didn't think I'd buy any of these other figures. Well, I was, my brother Doug, he recently decided he wanted to build this Cree Sentry, which was to build a figure. And so he had asked me to look around and hunt for these figures. So for the last little while, I have been looking for these, and I actually found them the last one he needed the other day. I got him Nick Fury. But while we were looking at, for these figures together, I commented about how, like, yeah, you know what, I, I know I skipped this whole wave, but now I kind of want some of them. Like this guy here, the Skrull Talos. Um, even though I didn't think he looked much like a Skrull looked in the comic books, not only was he a you know character with a lot of personality in the Captain Marvel movie, but they've since brought him back for his little cameo in... Uh, in spider-man there so it made me want him a little bit more and i said to my brother i'm like you know what i'm kind of tempted to pick some of these up myself but i just can't do it at 30 bucks a pop the problem is walmart never puts anything on sale so these guys will never go down well literally uh like a few days later i was in walmart and they had all of these guys marked down from 29 bucks to 19 bucks and that was enough to do it for me so i picked up three of them and one of them was yon rog so here he is. You've seen his package here in lots of detail, so let's pop him open and take a look at him. Okay, so here is Yon Rog outside of the packaging. So if you've seen Captain Marvel, the movie, then uh, yeah, you know about as much as I do about this guy. Um, I wasn't sure when I first saw these, because I saw these figures advertised before the movie actually came out, and I didn't know if he was like a newly created character for the movie or what. Um, I actually did look him up on Wikipedia for a minute or two, and I found out he, he is an established character that ties into Captain Marvel's origin, so it makes sense that they would have used him for the movie. Um, what would, really would have elevated this figure for me is if they gave him an unmasked head. I am a fan of Jude Law, and uh, yeah, I, it would have been kind of cool to have a nice Jude Law head on this figure. Um, I don't know if this uh, nose and mouth really screams Jude Law to me. I don't really see him in this figure. And I just don't like the way that this helmet looks. So I'm just not a big fan of this figure. But helmet aside, the uh, the design of the body and the, the color is really nice. Um, like they made a Captain Marvel figure in the same outfit before she became Captain Marvel and she was just a Kree soldier. You could get her in the same black and green. And I thought it looked really sharp and I thought about buying that figure. And it does look good on him. So maybe this head will grow on me, or I have a whole bag of unused heads. Maybe I can find a, a head that I like better to sit on top of this guy. But, uh, yeah, the body is really nice. His only accessory is a little gun there, and, of course, his build-a-figure part. But, uh, yeah, not bad. So, Yon Rog. So here is the uh, Skrull Soldier Talos that I mentioned. He was the one that kind of made me want to buy these figures in the first place. Um, but it was really the sale price that convinced me to do it. And so yeah, pretty cool. Let's pop him open and take a look. So here is Talos. But he doesn't have any accessories other than his build-a-figure part. So like I said, I saw this figure before I'd seen the movie. And again, I didn't know if Talos was an actual named Skrull character from the comic books or just a character they made up. Because um, there have been lots of Skrulls over the years. And I just kind of thought, well, if they're going to do a kind of a, just one scroll figure for this line, I wish they'd just made like a generic scroll trooper or maybe a comic looking version of one of the more famous scrolls, like the Super Scroll. But instead, we got this kind of boring looking scroll guy. However, after watching the movie, I thought Ben Mendelsohn played this guy so uh, charismatically that I really liked him. And uh, like I said, his little cameo in Spider Man Far From Home really sold me on him and I was like man I kind of really want this character not just because he's a scroll but because he's Talos and yeah so I'm glad that I finally got him I think he'll make a nice addition to my Marvel Cinematic Universe shelf and yeah I don't have a whole lot to say about it it's a nice sculpt good articulation pretty standard the uh, rubbery I don't know outside coat he wears 
might hinder his movement a little bit. Like, I don't even know if he has a torso crunch in there. It's kind of hard to move him. But yeah, not a bad figure. Talos. And the last figure I picked up on sale is this guy here, Janice Vell. And yeah, so he's this dude here. He's another Kree soldier. Let's pop him open and take a look at him. So here is Janice Vell outside of the packaging. And I think this guy looks really cool. I like his look of... It looks like he's kind of just made up of stars or something. Like, I don't know if he's supposed to be wearing a black sparkly outfit or if he is made up of cosmic dust or something because that's the kind of... Like, he's a living, you know, uh, constellation or something. That's kind of what he looks like here. And I like it. I considered buying this figure um, when they first came out, even at 30 bucks, um, just because I, I like the look. But, uh, and I probably could answer my own questions if I felt like doing a little bit of research before I get on this video. I'm pretty sure I know a little bit about this character, um, if it's the guy I'm thinking of, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I believe he is the son of the original male Captain Marvel. And Marvel Comics seems to have tried to make this guy a thing for a while. Um, like, he was called Marvel Boy for a while, I believe, and he was called Legion or something for a while, and he had, like, white hair and a ponytail, and then he was called Protector, and he wore, like, white and black outfit with the fin on it. Like, he's just been multiple characters, and nobody really seems to make it work, and fans don't really seem to care one way or the other. Um, I assume this look that he has here is based off of something that happened to him in the comic books, but uh, I'm not familiar with it. Um, he hasn't had his own book in a while, so this may have happened to him in his Marvel Boy comic book, or it might be just a spin-off story from the Avengers or Captain Marvel or something. But whatever it is, I like the look. Still not, I don't like it enough to collect a comic book featuring this guy necessarily, but uh, yeah, kind of cool. Anyway, I don't have a whole lot to say about him either. Um, but lastly, I will show you, now that I have quite a few components of the Build-A-Figure, I will show you the Kree Sentry. Alright, so here is my Kree Sentry, the Build-A-Figure from the Captain Marvel wave. Now you might notice he's got gimpy little arms, and that's because I don't have the correct arms. But since I have the head, torso, and both legs, it seems kind of a waste to just throw this guy in the spare parts, spare parts bucket. So I might have some arms that will suit him. Like, for example, I've got this Thanos arm. Maybe that would work better. I don't know. But the arms I stuck in him are Ultron arms. And Ultron was not as big a character as him, so they don't really look right. But the color match is pretty good. And if I just set him in the back of the shelf, you don't even really notice it that bad. I don't really think I'm going to go out and buy Captain Marvel or young Nick Fury just in order to get his arms. But who knows? Maybe I would. There you get that option. I've also got some juggernaut arms. I don't know. I might be able to piece something together. But arms aside, this is a pretty cool looking figure. And he'd make a nice addition to the, the shelf. He's got kind of a unique look. Um, I assume this is a Jack Kirby design because it kind of screams Jack Kirby. But uh, even if he didn't initially design this thing, I just love that it looks like a Jack Kirby design at the very least. So yeah. This is a cool figure, and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's all my new action figure purchases this week. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe to the channel. Please comment below. I appreciate uh, all your comments, and I try to answer every single one of them. So uh, yeah, until next time.